Magic. Hall of Fame. Friends call her Magic. Hall of Fame. One of the greatest basketball minds. How about that? Woohoo! She is back. The icon, the Hall of Famer, does some work with OKC. Just really uh, a staple in the basketball world. Natsi Lieberman is here. I'm happy you were able to join us this week. I know last week was a hot mess for all of us. Um, the good news is, since we had you on, a lot has happened in the world of WNBA. Kennedy Carter just threw everyone into a tizzy. Uh, we've not stopped talking about it for three straight days. Um, I want to start with really the foul itself, because that's where this all started. Some people had an issue with it, some people didn't. What did you see in the foul on Caitlin Clark? Well, I mean, if uh, if I were Caitlin Clark, I would have punched her in the face. Uh, but <laughs> I'm from New York, and I would have told her to fuck off. Yeah. And that would actually cure the problem, because I've known Kennedy since she was in high school here in Dallas. She's a tough kid. She's a really good basketball player. She's going to come after you because she's very physical, which is okay. Yeah. But damn, where's where's Caitlin Clark's teammates? I'd be pissed as shit at my teammates that nobody came to my defense. You know, you know Gretzky had a, had an enforcer. Michael Jordan had Oakley. I mean, that that's honestly it's just bullshit. This is this has to be better. Indiana has to be better. Somebody has to come to this kid's, uh, I don't want to say rescue. Right. But you guys know this better than Defense. anybody, Michelle, as well. Uh, in 1984, when Michael Jordan came into the league, he changed the economics of the league financially, with the GLA, with all the uh, TV contracts. He was on TV every game. Arenas were filled. When Tiger Woods... Uh, was tearing up the PGA when he first started. He changed the, the, the PGA world for every golfer financially. And, you know, people need to thank Caitlin Clark for being that generational athlete that is making them wealthy. They will have generational wealth. They would not have airplanes, charter jets without her. They wouldn't have been on, you know, TV. And I know the W has worked hard over the last 20 years 27, 28 years, but they weren't doing this with all the greats, with the Hall of Famers, with Lisa, with Tarasi, with Bird. It was still sporadic, you know, with some of the greatest players in the game. But Caitlin has caught the interest of the common person, both women, men, children. And we need to celebrate her, not tolerate her. She's a great kid. She's like LeBron. She doesn't want to, you know, mix it up with people, although she could. But, you know, they don't want to hurt their their image. Hmm. And But somebody needs to do something. I, look, back in 1997, I was a 39-year-old rookie for the Phoenix Mercury in the W. And there was a player in New York, uh, Rhonda Blades. She played at Vanderbilt. Rhonda called me. She goes, man, Spoon is jacking me every day in practice. Teresa Weatherspoon, who I adore. And I said, Rhonda, if you're going to let Teresa knock and beat the crap out of you every day, she's going to do it the whole season. Next time she does it, punch her in the face. And <laughs> it'll never happen again. And maybe I'm a street kid from New York. but And I had to do that. Look, when I played for the Lakers and Pat Riley in 1980 in Summer League, uh, I, in my first practice, legendary Pat Riley three-hour practice, you know, the guys were very physical with me. I mean... You know, Lou, Chandler, you guys are big, strong, you know, and I was getting roughed up. And I started two fist fights in practice, and nobody ever touched me again. <laughs> so, is that, that, is this something, so is this something, you know, if you're the head coach of the Fever, are you saying, okay, if you're a team, no more. If they put her on her ass, you put her on her ass harder, and, th and this, that, that's going to be the message going forward? Well, now, the answer is yes, Chandler. My first year coaching in the league, I never had a technical foul in the WNBA as a coach. And um, Doug Collins called me down to his office, and he goes, hey, you got to go up there, and you got to get Tom Wilson to put 25 T's in your contract. And I went, why? He goes, because your players got to know you got their back, and you're going to have to take some T's. Yeah. I, I just did not know this. I started yelling at the officials just for the hell of it. So my <laughs> players thought that I was like there for them, even though I thought some of my players were idiots. But I was like, you can't do that. Blah, 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 blah. You're going to need to give me a T. And <laughs> it's just the way it went. So, yeah, uh, uh, coach is going to have to take some T's. Uh, she's going to have to talk to some of her players and say, do not let that happen again. 
And that's just the way of the world. You got to have somebody protecting your superstar. And she is a superstar. But there's a lot of jealousy. And as much as I love women and love the game, we got to stop being petty with each other. We need to celebrate her, not tolerate her. <clears throat> oh, it's a tale as old as time. Um, I, I'm curious what you think. Like, Lou, Lou's obviously entrenched in the women's game. Uh, I'm new, so I, I'm, lear I'm becoming a fan with everybody else at the same time. I'm also sitting back and watching a lot of experts have a lot of opinions on things. So you know this league better than anyone. What is your opinion on what sort of transpired over the course of the last several days in this industry, the sports media world? Well, if, you're still, if we're still talking about Caitlin Clark, uh, I, I think the world is in a really bad place. I think, you know, we wake up and we're protesting about things we don't even know what we're protesting about. I think people are trying to divide us. Uh, I'm not for segregation, I'm for inclusion. And I just think we're pitting people against each other. We're actually pitting minorities against minorities, which, which is really sad. So uh, I, I think we have to take a step back and, and take a breath. What is it that we're trying to get out of this thing called a career? At, at best, you get maybe 20 years, you know, Sue Bird, Tarasi, uh, they're an anomaly. I played a 39 and 50, I'm an anomaly. Uh, but what are we trying to get out of this? Hmm. And we have to do this together because nobody who's great has ever done anything by themselves. So hmm. the league is doing great stuff, but everything, they're making so many things racial at this point. And I think we just have to, you know, if there's a Larry Bird, he's a great white hope. If there's a Trevor, you know, uh, in boxing, if a guy comes along, he, you know, he's a great white hope. I was not the great white hope. I was just a, a baller. OK, and if we would just take away, you know, the, the, the shades that we're throwing at each other with color and we're just ballers, we're just pl trying to play. We're one injury away from not being who we are. Larry Bird said this to me one time. He goes, I'm the greatest player in the world when I'm on the court. But when I'm on the bench, that guy in the stands is just as good as me. Hmm. So I just think we need to work hard. We're in a business. OK, this is not a girls club. It's not a boys club. This is business. We're in a trillion dollar industry and we have to grow it together. And we can, but we have to see a bigger picture. Thank you. Very, very, very well said. Um, <clears throat> Nancy, I want to switch gears over to um, the Thunder. Looking back on their season and all the success they had, would you, would you consider it a successful season despite them being um, upset to the Mavs in, in the postseason? Uh, it was tremendous, Lou. I mean, really, uh, Sam Presti did such an incredible job um, with, you know, putting the dynamics of this team together. You know, winning is hard in this league. And to go from winning 17-plus games from the year before and then getting to the series with the Mavericks, it just said a lot. You know, um, I, uh, Sam even said it the other day. He had a little bit of a misstep with bringing in Gordon Haywood. Um, you know, I mean, think about it. If OKC gets Gafford or PJ Washington, that changes the whole dynamics of that that you know uh, you know series. Goes, yeah. But you know Nico Harrison gets them, and look where the Mavericks are today. So the the, the future in Oklahoma City is so bright. Th okay, think about this, guys. And I say, guys, you too, Michelle. I know. <laughs> Kawhi, right? Kawhi wanted to win now. So, you know, he says, we, we got to get Paul George. So they trade that young Shea, SGA, to Oklahoma City for picks and for Paul George. And, you know, look what Shea's done. I mean, I joked with him one day, you know, he's 25. He's about to age out at Oklahoma City. Because <laughs> these guys are like 19, 20, 21, 22. They are like tighter than tight. I mean, they're unbelievable, that team. Chet was better than advertised, right? He kind of surprised us. I think uh, I, I might screw this up, but he was the only uh, player in history to have a hundred threes, mm -hmm. 100 blocks, and 100 assists for a big. It's pretty unbelievable, right, with all the great players in the league, in the history of the league? Uh, he changed the dynamics defensively at the rim. He can block your shot, he can change your shot, and he can get in your head. Uh, and that's a stat that we don't see on a sheet. Uh, SGA is like a poet with the ball. Jalen Williams, uh, J, J, uh, Will, excuse me, J-Dub, he got so much better from the year before. 
and and Coach Dagnall, I got I got to be honest. This guy is like a, it's taken a master class when every press conference or every time I'm around him, he's brilliant. The guys really like him, and I'm going to get to to the Lakers coaching. It, so the players, they adore this man. He can be firm, but he can be fair. But he's he's got their back, and you have to have great interpersonal skills with players. I mean, they'll give up a little X and O's if they know you care about them, and they have that going in Oklahoma City. They're they're destined to to be a championship team. Yeah, Nancy, we had Isaiah Joe on the show yesterday, and he was basically talking about how it feels like an AAU team sometimes. Yeah. They're all so close. They all hang out. They all just want to win. The one weakness that they did have this year was rebounding, and they got out-rebounded in the postseason as well, which we kind of knew was going to happen with playing Chet at the five and, and kind of thin in that position. Is there someone you saw this year? I know you mentioned Daniel Gafford. Is there like a big you kind of had your eyes on? We are like, man, we should go after this guy this summer and kind of add that beef down low? You know, I, uh, it could be uh, an experienced NBA guy, but, you know, I, I, I think Sam is at the, uh, the point now where he still has so many picks that he can package this up. Um, I mean, we did have Al Horford a couple years ago, right? I mean, that was pretty unbelievable. Now Al is doing just playing the best ball of, of this point in his career. Um yeah, I mean, th there's bigs, but, you know, as you guys know this, uh, the money has to match up, the length of the contract has to match up, what do you have in cap space? So it's not just going after a name, it's going after somebody who can actually fit into your dynamics uh, of this team. Because you don't want to ruin this team. Like, everybody was talking about, well, they're going to get rid of Giddy. Well, he's part of that team dynamic that, that you know he's a glue guy with the with his teammates so so much of that is really important what is it like uh there like in that community around that team when the mvp talks are just at their hottest moment and it's like everyone's just it's Jokic, it's Jokic, and then the thunder show up and they're the number one team and all of a sudden sga because lou was an sga guy before the season even started for mvp <laughs> and there was a lot of good arguments to be made for him to get it what was it like being around the team, I mean, was it a no-brainer? Everyone thought this is his? Well, you know, he was in the mix the year before, and he makes the All-Star All team for the first time. SGA came back, and, and he was better than ever. He, you know, I mean, people forget he's six foot six. He's long. He, he can play a slow man's game, and then he has that burst and explosiveness. He's a, very, uh, a willing passer. He can hit his three-point shot. I know he continues to improve on that, but he's got moves. He's got counter moves. He's got uh, just the angles, a right hand, left hand. I know you guys were talking about Kyrie and his left hand. Shea is unbelievable with balance, uh, leverage, and he can just, he's got such spatial awareness that he can just get through a, a, a hole. You think you're trapping him, and he's gone, and now he's bringing that second-level player up. He knows where his, you know, uh, next pass is. And really, he's unbelievable. And he was one of the best. I think he led uh, in steals. He's got, you know, in the league for guards. He's one of the best rebounding guards in the NBA. A <clears throat> tremendous defender. And if you, you know, when you have Chet, you can actually play harder, right? Lou, when you got a big guy uh, or, or Chandler, you got a big guy on the inside, you can really play hard on the perimeter because if you miss, if you, you know, get attacked, there's somebody behind you to clean up that mess. But it allows you to play with that energy and that effort and be a dog on the perimeter because if you have nobody there, I don't care what anybody says, nobody wants to look bad if somebody, you know, blows by you and there's nobody rotating, mm -hmm. you know, the lower guy is not there. So that whole team is wrapped around what SGA does. They adore him. He's kind. Uh, he cares. He's so He's intelligent. And he, he'll, he'll be in that uh, MVP voting for many years to come. Lou's going to have him again before next season. For sure. I already see I'm it a, I'm a huge SGA guy. Yep. I, I had the pleasure of playing with him for a season, and I, I just loved the kid. I thought he, I thought he was great. By the way, you don't hear people described as kind very often. Rarely, but, he, very but underrated. he's literally kind. I know. That's like. a, it's a good quality. Um, head coach of the power in the big three. First woman coach of men's professional team. Won a championship. So wh what has that entire experience been like? 
Briggs has been fantastic until uh, you guys mentioned J.J. Reddick and you didn't put me in that group. Um, so I called my therapist. Uh, before I Fair enough. I get it. <laughs> uh, no, I think J.J. would be great. But, you know, coaching men is normal to me. I'll, I'll tell you this. In 2011, when I was hired uh, by the Dallas Mavericks to be the head coach of their G League team, it had never happened before in an NBA affiliate. And... I got invited to the White House and uh, President Obama was there and he was in a big press conference and then he comes over to me and my son TJ and you know he goes Nancy you know I I I'm I'm a black man I just happen to be the president of the United States of America it's yeah. normal to me I've been this my whole life he goes you just happen to be a white woman <laughs> coaching predominantly black men you, this is normal to you. You've been doing this. I mean, you were playing in Harlem. You were playing in Brooklyn. You were playing all over in the streets against men. You know, and he mentioned the Lakers and things like that and playing for the Utah Jazz and, and Frank Layton. He goes, this is normal to us. It's not normal to the outside world. He goes, that is our job, is to make this normal. In 2024, we're normalizing seeing me on a bench in the NBA with the Kings, uh, seeing me in the W, seeing uh, Becky, seeing, you know, Ginny Boo. But we need to have more of this. So if Jackie Robinson is the first, uh, you know, man of color to go to Major League Baseball and he's a one-off, we have failed. But then Larry Doby came and Elston Howard came and, you know, now the, the league has changed. Same with basketball. So we just can't have a one-off. I mean, why should I not be interviewed for a head coaching job, I've coached in every league and won yeah. championships. And I'm not saying you have to hire me, but allow me to go through the process. Allow Becky to go through the process. Allow mm -hmm. Teresa Weatherspoon to go through the process. Maybe you'll find out we see something differently than you. Mm -hmm. And then it's called collaboration. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I'm comfortable in my own skin. I, I love being around you guys in the locker room. Uh, there's a lot of respect. Uh, I'm firm, but I'm fair. Uh, and what we're trying to do, I'm trying to get you guys to your next contracts. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get you to generational wealth mm -hmm. and to places you never, you know, maybe thought you could get to. And uh, you do this together in coaching. And it's okay to tell your, your players you love them or you care about them because you're just big, big boys. <laughs> and you want to be cared for by your coaching Absolutely. staff. Shit, Nancy, if I was a free agent after this conversation, I'm going, I'm signing with you. I'll tell you. I swear. Nancy, I want to I want to ask you really quick. Um, Ice Cube made a made a lucrative offer to Caitlin Clark to to join the big three. Um, do you think that was, that was something that she should have actually considered? Hmm. I do. I do think she should have considered it because Dion played in two leagues. Bo Jackson played in two leagues, football, you know, and baseball. And they both excelled. I, I thought it was a lot of money on the table. It was $5 million to play, $5 million in merchandising, and Damn. $5 million for ownership of, of part ownership of a team. It was only for eight games. And there was only one conflict in the schedule. And they would have taken a private jet and flown her to the, to the Indiana game. Yeah, I, I would have done that. Um, and Caitlin's a, a friend of mine. And I don't want to get in the mix of that because she has her agent. But... Why not? If you play in the WNBA, it's groundbreaking. If you play in both leagues, it's world breaking. Yeah. I mean, nobody else has done that. Why not do things nobody else has done? That's a great point. Dang. That's this has been point. awesome. Yeah. I am so glad we got you back on, Nancy. I appreciate all of the time, all the insight. Um, hope we'll have you on again soon. And by the way, get your podcast game up. Then the Lakers will come calling. <laughs> this is how it all works. You know this. Uh, <laughs> then I'm going to slide in with you guys. Yeah, yeah, perfect. It's perfect. Thank we'll be right you so back. Much.